I'm Robert Osborne and welcome. Thanks for joining us for another session devoted to our month-long look at Asian images on film. It's a retrospective that was programmed by the man sitting here with me now, Associate Professor Peter X. Fing of the University of Delaware, the editor of this book, Screening Asian Americans. Welcome, Peter. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. We have a rather historic film on tap next. It's a melodrama from the old Metro Company from the silent screen days of 1923. It's called The Toll of the Sea, and it stars Anna Mae Wong. And let's talk a little about Anna Mae Wong. Well, Anna Mae Wong is, is probably the first big Hollywood star, the first big Asian-American Hollywood star. I mean, Sesko Hayakawa, of course, had, had, uh, had emerged before her and, and before him, uh, uh, his wife, Suru Aoki. Um, but uh, Anna Mae Wong was the first one to poised for in the 20s when, when Hollywood really became what we now think of as Hollywood. She's right. the one that everyone remembers now. Right. Um, her career lasted into the sound era in a way that, that Hayakawa's didn't. He, of course, made those, those late films like The Bridge on the River Kwai, but mm -hmm. uh, she was always kind of a public figure. Um, so part of what makes Anna Mae Wong special is not just her film work, but the fact that she was a public personality. She was known as a, as a flapper and a member of the smart set. Um, she traveled to Europe and was a big star there as well. Um, the Chinese government very publicly berated her for uh, portraying stereotypes, and that got a lot of publicity for her. There was the stark contrast between the role she played on screen, uh, which were of two, two contrasting sorts. There was the submissive... Madame Butterfly inspired character like the one we're going to see today in The Toll of the Sea. And then there was the vamp, the dragon lady. So there was that kind of sexy, slinky, vampy mm -hmm. character. Um, and then off screen, she had the, the notion of a modern woman. And, and the publicity of this, of, of course, uh, was at pains to say she's an American girl. She was born here. She speaks, she speaks fluent English. Uh, and this is the other thing that set her apart from Tsuru Aoki and Sesshu Hawakawa, mm -hmm. who were identified as being Japanese and mm -hmm. had been born in Japan. Now, where was her career at the point that she made this movie we're about to see? This is the very first film she made. She really? was 18 years old. She's the star of this film, and it's, uh, it's pretty extraordinary that, that they put her in this film because it's also the debut of a brand new technology, two-strip Technicolor two -strip film. Technicolor, right. This is like uh, the first, right? It's the first, it's the first feature film. I think, they, of right. course, they had made some shorter films with the, right. with the process. And this is where... Uh, you know, is it, is it just a coincidence, or if, if we look at Hollywood history, we find that every time a new technology is introduced, um, they, they, they would go to exotic kinds of settings. So obviously for color, they would want to represent an exotic setting, although in this case the film was shot in Santa Monica, exotic Santa Monica. <laughs> Very exotic, yeah. Uh, so, th you know, I think one of the reasons why this film was selected was for the cultural contrast, the visual contrast between right. the Americans and the Chinese is represented right. in the film. Well, let's have a look at the movie. Here it is, a movie shot entirely in two-strip Technicolor from 1923, The Toll of the Sea. <laughs> 